morning, guys. Hope you're having a great Saturday. A um, couple things I just want to talk to you guys really quick about is we're going to look at the charts. Um, we're also going to talk about Ethereum sell-off fears, and there's a new disastrous amendment that's competing in for the cryptocurrency tax in the infrastructure bill. So why don't we get into the sticks really quick here. So we're looking at Bitcoin right now at on the one-day chart. I added a line here which corresponds to how the 50-day has been uh, creeping up lately. And if it continues to creep up this way, um, I think we might be looking at the Golden Cross within the next uh, probably week. We're looking at the end of, looks like uh, August 16th, August 17th. If this all holds true, we may be you know doing that crisscross pattern where the 50-day moving average just goes above the 200-day moving averages. If we see that, I think we're gonna be set up for a nice rally again uh, going into October, November, December where the price is just gonna go up parabolic, I think, uh, reaching new highs with Bitcoin. But right now we're still up, uh, we're trading at 43,397. So we crossed that barrier what, that was holding us back, which was right around here, the 42,340 mark. That was kind of keeping us down uh, for a while here. Uh, so we bounced past it. Uh, our next barrier is gonna be probably the 52,000 uh, 50, mark right around there. And you can see here we have a Stop gap here, blocking us a little bit. Um, so that's in. That's at least hopeful right now. I think. I think that's good news. Um, what else we got? And Bitcoin going on. There's nothing else going on. We're about the 50-day. Obviously, we're up past the 200-day. Now we're just waiting for the Golden Cross to come in. Uh, Dogecoin. Dogecoin has had a nice bounce also here. If we look at the four-hour chart, it is. <coughs> excuse me. It is right on the 50-day uh, moving average. If it can stay above it and bounce above it even further, um, I think there's some good upside potential on it. Uh, the only thing that's kind of worrying me is the RSI is kind of it's not too bad. It's at uh, 69, 70, uh, and the price is at 22, almost 5. So we'll keep an eye on this one. Uh, hopefully that continues to bounce up. Stellar. Stellar uh, is again above its 50-day moving average. Uh, it is right now at 29 uh, cents. If you can get above this 30 cent mark here, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and stay above it, I think we'll be in good shape. Uh, obviously, we'd like to see this also do a golden cross eventually with the 200 day moving average. Um, but right now, the RSI is uh, not too bad. It's 61, uh, so there's obviously room to go up. Litecoin. Litecoin is above its uh, 50 day moving average. It's at 115.90 right now, uh, having a little pullback right now. Uh, a good uptrend in the last uh, on the four-hour chart. Uh, RSI is down a little bit, so we have a little bit more room to go up. Um, I think this weekend will be interesting. Uh, let's take a look at Cardano ADA. ADA just blew past the resistance right now on the four-hour chart. Uh, resistance was about 138. It is now at 145. Our next resistance might be uh, right around this mark here. It looks like. Uh, Yep, 148, 147 might be our resistance, so we have to keep an eye on it. Ethereum, Ethereum continues to uh, skyrocket here. Uh, we're at uh, $3,074. Uh, 3, um, there is some concern, obviously, that the price has gone up so high so fast that we may have a sell-off coming in. A couple of the stocks that we talked about earlier this week. Um, Hive did pretty good uh, this week, uh, obviously. Uh, it is up for the week. Let me see it. Let's go to the day chart. Day chart. So we have July, August. So we're up from 253 to 304. It's a nice uh, climb up in the week. August 2nd. So let's see. We started here. We went up here. We went up about 20% this week in Hive, uh, which, is a, which is good. Um, I think there's still a lot more room for it to go up. Uh, Marathon Digital, same thing. Uh, where was it? July, August. We started here. It is trading now at 34. I think we can go up even more. That one, that one's up 25%, so that one did a little bit better than Hive did. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on. But I do think the uh, end game for Marathon is about 250, and Hive it's about um, 30 to 40 dollars and change um, as long as Bitcoin obviously can, continues to go up. Okay, let's get into uh, the news here. 
So Ethereum price soars above 3K into red zone triggering sell-off fears. Uh, it has been on a huge rally lately. Uh, excuse me, throw was dry. Um, an on-chain indicator notorious for accurately predicting Ethereum tops returns amid the ongoing price rally. Uh, Ethereum's native asset, Ether, crossed about 3,000 in an extended upside rally on August 7th, hitting a three-month high. Nevertheless, the cryptocurrency Cryptocurrency's incredible move upside also boosted its possibility of facing a bearish backlash. On, an on-chain indicator that tracks the total percent of Ethereum addresses and profits predicted this, uh, the said downside outlook. In detail, the so-called Ether, <coughs> excuse me, Ethereum per percent addresses and profits indicator by Glassnode reached 96.4 amid the Ethereum, Ethereum USD price rally. Lex Muskovsky, uh, Chief Investment Officer at Muskovsky Capital, highlighted the metrics capital ca capacity of predicting Ethereum top. In hindsight, whenever the Glassnode indicator crossed the 90 threshold, it resulted in profit taking among Ether investors. Um, hopefully, a lot of them will have diamond hands and hold on to it. Um, so yeah, I mean, goes up well. Yeah, I wasn't. It's not always correct. We're looking at it here. Uh, percent of addresses in profit as that goes up uh, there isn't too much I mean you're having a slight downside here uh, I mean over here in profit and it's just kept on going up so we could be still going way up higher um, I don't think it's as conclusive of uh, a chart as some would think uh, it does go up but then it goes down a little bit so we may have a little pullback I'm not worried about it uh, we are back in the red zone historically associated with local tops, said Moskovsky, as he referred to the glass note chart above. Nonetheless, he added that the price might stay near its current highs, about 3000 for a while. Uh, supply squeeze meets holding sentiments. Moskovsky's outlook pointed at traders' intention to hold Ether majorly due to the euphoria surrounding a software upgrade that has added deflationary pressure to ETH. Um, ETH. The optimism around the London hard fork stems from increasing scarcity that should make the digital asset more valuable in the long run, specifically against uh, booming demand. Uh, the London upgrade will divide almost uh, 13,000 new Ethereum tokens issued to pay for miners. Gas fees into three parts. One of them is the base fee that users pay to conduct Ethereum transactions, which the upgrade Ethereum protocol will now burn. In addition, Ethereum's ongoing transactions from an energy intensive proof of stake mechanism or f uh, to a faster and cheaper proof of stake also reduces active uh, Ethereum supply out of the market. In detail, the POS mechanism prompts network operators to deposit 32 uh, point of uh, proof of stake mechanism prompts network operators to deposit 32 Ethereum into a smart contract as a stake to run the blockchain and return the protocol rewards depositors with annual yields. Uh, so we talked about this a little bit uh, in the video. I think it was yesterday we posted. I posted. Uh, the RSI, Ethereum's latest run up above 3,000, also pushed its daily relative strength index RSI into an overbought area. The RSI enables traders to measure an asset trend momentum to evaluate its overbought and oversold condition. In simple terms, traders inter interpret a reading above 70 as overbought, a cue to sell the asset. Conversely, an RSI below 70 poses buying opportunity due to the asset's oversold conditions. Uh, so we saw that a little bit. Also, the RSI is way up there, uh, so we we'll have to keep an eye on it. Meanwhile, following wedge breakout setup between brewing, breakout setup brewing on the daily Ethereum chart, envisions its price uh, profit target near 3250. Uh, following wedge breakout typically lasts uh, typically lasts by as much as a total height between the wedges upper and lower trending lines. So we we'll have to keep an eye on obviously Ethereum where it does. I think it's going to go up higher before it bounces or goes down a little bit lower. You're going to have to have a healthy pullback a little bit for it to uh, continue to rise up. Nothing ever goes up in a straight line. So I'm going to have a little bouncy road up. Uh, and then finally, crypto community slams disastrous new amendment to Biden's big infrastructure bill. So they are, I believe, voting on this. They're supposed to be voting on it today. Uh, so there's two bills in uh, introduced into, well, not bills, bill amendments introduced into this uh, bill. Uh, Biden's managed by part, bipartisan infrastructure plans struck a rare chord of cooperation between Republican and Democrats, but changes it propose, proposes to cryptocurrency regulations are tip, uh, tripping up the bill. The administration intends to pay $28 billion of its planned infrastructure spending by tightening tax compliances with historically under-regulated arena of digital currency. That's why cryptocurrency is, hope, is, is popping up 
in a bill that's mostly about uh, rebuilding bridges and roads. The legislation's vocal critics argue that the bill effort to do is to do is a is slapdash, particularly a bit that would declare anyone responsible for and regu- uh, regularly providing any service effectuating transfers of digital assets to be a broker, subject, subject to tax reporting requirements. While that definition might be more straightforward in traditional corner of finance, it could force cryptocurrency developers, companies, and even anyone mining digital currencies to somehow collect and report information on users, something that by design isn't even possible in a decentralized financial system. So we talked about this in a video earlier in the week that I posted um, in the original bill. Now a new amendment to, uh, to the critical spending package is threatening to make matters even worse. Unintended consequences. In a joint letter about the bills, uh, tax Square, Coinbase, Rabbit Capital, and other stakeholders warned of financial surveillance and unintended impacts for cryptocurrency miners and developers. The Electronic, Front, uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation and Fight for the Future, two privacy-minded digital rights organizations, also slammed the bill. There's a lot of, uh, if you look at Twitter or anything like that, you're going to see a lot of people obviously against the new bill that, or the new bill amendment that, that has been introduced. Uh, it, I mean, it is just ridiculous. Uh, so you can read this here, go to Coinbase, Coinbase has uh, posted this on their Twitter account. Uh, following the outcry of the cryptocurrency community, a pair of influential senators proposed an amendment to clarify the new reporting rules. Uh, Finance Committee Chairman Ron White, uh, Wyden pushed back against the bill, proposing an amendment with fellow Finance Committee member Pat Tomey that would modify the bill's language. The amendment would establish New reporting does not apply to individuals developing blockchain technology and wallets, removing some of the bill's ambiguity on the issues. By clarifying the definition of a broker, our amendment will ensure non-financial intermediaries like miners, network validators, and other service providers, many of whom don't even have the personal identification information needed to file 1099 with the IRS, are not subject to the reporting requirements specified in bipartisan infrastructure package, Tommy said. Wyoming's, <coughs> excuse me, Wyoming Senator Cynthia Loomis also threw her support behind the Tomey and Wyden Amendment, as did Color, Colorado Governor uh, Jared Polis. Uh, the Wyden, so, so here's a tweet from Senator Cynthia Loomis. The Wyden Loomis Tomey Amendment is, is simple. It clarifies in law what most of us already believe that validators of distributed ledger data like miners and stakers, hardware uh, wallet providers, and software developers should not be required to report transactions data to the IRS. Completely agree with that. There, I mean, there's no way a miner can do it. Miners are just processing transactions. They don't see who the people are that are doing the transactions. They, they have no idea what's going on there. They have no way to know who their customers are because data is coming from all over the world. So you can't do that. you got to fix the language in that, which they're trying to do. Uh, picking winners and losers, the drama doesn't stop there. Well, with negotiations around the bill ongoing, then text could be finalized over the weekend. A pair of senators proposed a competing amendment that isn't winning any fans in the crypto community. So this is where the problem starts. The amendment from Senator Rob Portman and Mark Warner would exempt traditional cryptocurrency miners who participate in energy-intensive proof-of-work systems from the new financial reporting requirements while keeping those rules in place for those using a proof-of-stake system. Portman worked with the Treasury Department to author the cryptocurrency portion of the original infrastructure bill. Uh, Jerry Brito wrote on Twitter, Wow, Senator Warren Portman are proposing a last-minute amendment competing with uh, Wyden Loomis' Tomey Amendment. It, it is a disastrous. It only excludes proof-of-work mining, and it does nothing for software. Devs ridiculous. Here, here's all, here is all it excludes. Validating distributing distributed ledger transactions through proof-of-work mining. Uh, what about proof-of-stake? Right? Those guys don't see it either, so it's kind of it's, it's ridiculous. We're selling... Uh, or selling hardware or software that, or software, the sole function of which is to permit perm- uh, persons to control a private key used for accessing digital assets on a distributed ledger. So it's completely ridiculous what they're putting down here. Uh, rather than requiring investment in computing hardware and energy bill capable, capable, capable of solving increased complex math problems, proof of stake systems rely on participants taking a financial stake in a given project, locking away some of the cryptocurrency to generate new coins. Proof of stake is emerging as an attractive, climate friendly alternative that could reduce the need for heavy computing and huge amounts of energy required for proof of work mining. That makes it all the more puzzling that the latest amendment would specify, spe- specifically let proof of work mining off the hook. Uh, yeah, 
I mean, proof, uh, you're seeing Ethereum going towards the end goal of being proof of uh, stake. So they can reduce all the mining energy required to do it. But it's still the same action going on. You're still validating all the transactions, but you're obviously using a lot less energy, energy to do it. But you're not seeing anything more than a normal proof of work miner would see. So that's ridiculous. Uh, continuing on here, some, uh, some popular digital currencies like Cardano are already built on proof of stake. Ethereum, the second biggest crypto industry, is in the process of migrating from the proof of work system to proof of stake to help scale its system and reduce fees. We already went over this, we talked this, about this earlier and in the video yesterday. Bitcoin is the most notable digital currency that relies on proof of work. Uh, the Warner Portman Amendment is being touted as a compromise, but it's not really half halfway between the Wyden Tomey Amendment and the existing bill. It just int introduces new problems that many crypto advocates view as a fresh ex existential threat to their work. Oh boy. Prominent members of the crypto community, including Square founder and Bitcoin booster Jack Dorsey, have thrown their support behind the Wyden Loomis Tomey Amendment while slamming the second proposal as misguided and damaging. Completely agree. Uh, the executive director of uh, Coin Center, a crypto think tank, called the Warner Portman Amendment disastrous. I completely agree with that. Coinbase CEO Brian uh, Armstrong echoed that language at the 11th hour at Mark Warner, who Mark Warner was proposed an amendment that would decide which fund foundational technologies are okay and which are not in crypto. He tweeted, uh, "We could find ourselves with the Senate deciding which types of crypto will, su will survive government regulation." He's got a long tweet storm on uh, Twitter. Check out Brian Armstrong if you can. Read the tweets. Uh, very well written. Very thoughtful. Uh, unfortunately for the crypto community and the promise of the proof of stake model, the White House is apparently throwing its weight behind the Warren Portman Amendment, though that could change as 11 hour negotiations continue. Uh, so we see here the White House on crypto amendment statement from uh, the administration is pleased with the pro progress that has yielded a compromise supported by Senators Warren Portman and Siena to advance the bipartisan infrastructure package to, and clarify the measure to reduce tax evasions in the cryptocurrency market. The administration believes this provision will strengthen tax compliance in this emerging area of finance and ensuring the high, that high income taxpayers are contributing what they owe under the law. We are grateful to Chairman Wyden and his leadership in pushing the Senate to address the issues. However, we believe that the alternative amendment put forward by Senators Warren, Portman, and Senators strike the right balance and make an important step forward in promoting tax compliance. So, and there you have it, folks. Uh, it's a mess. We'll see what today brings, <coughs> excuse me, to us. We'll keep an eye on it, um, and we'll post anything that happens. Uh, hopefully, they do the right thing. I'm hoping. Right, let me know what you guys think as far as where Ethereum is going to go, where Bitcoin is going to go in the next couple of days. Um, I'll be watching, obviously, for the Golden Cross coming up here in the next couple of days to a week, to maybe a week and a half. We'll see what that happens. If we get that, we'll be in good shape. I think uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum and all the rest are going to go to a new all-time highs. Um, have a great weekend. That's all I got. Uh, please consider subscribing, liking the, by liking the video. If you enjoyed it, letting me know down in the comments if you'd like to see something else or what you think about all of this. Um, I'll check my the comments throughout the day. Have a great day, you guys. I'll see you next one.